KCR NAM 2019. We're speaking with Andy Mack with Akai. Andy, last year, you uh, with your with your salesmanship sold me a, an Akai Live, and I bought one. And now this looks it looks it looks it looks like you're you've taken the Akai the Live uh, the MPC Live, and you've you've expanded it somehow. What is going on with this new product, which is called the Akai Force? Right. So basically, there is all kinds of workflows out there, and we saw a huge need for so many different types of musicians to be able to do things with patterns, okay? Using patterns, clip matrix, okay? It expands what you can do in any environment. So if you are um, a live performer, if you're a DJ, if you're a singer-songwriter, you're a producer, this workflow is familiar with with, with all of those kind of customers, okay? It's not completely unfamiliar with the MPC Live as yeah. well. Yeah, see, so MPC Live, that is your traditional 16 pads. It's very beat driven, and we have some of those kind of elements inside here, but this takes things to a whole new level. You know, if you put those two devices together, obviously you can use all your MPC stuff, right? But what Force gives you is this real time workflow of using loops and patterns. So, let me show you, for instance, okay? Um, I've got a matrix view. So in my matrix view, I can see all of my all my clips. Now they could be audio clips or MIDI, right? Now I could bring in audio stems and start remixing stuff or, or just take concept ideas and think, Do you know what, I like that, I'm gonna make something out of it. So let me take a very familiar very familiar piece of music. Okay, so I, I'm gonna I'll just turn one of the effects off because I want to show you some of the stuff that we All can right. do. It's so cool. So that's the melodic part. That's the melodic part. Human nature, right? So let's bring in Michael's vocal. Right now, when I hit the clip. It won't launch until the quantize. So I've got this control over those two parts. Right? Now on this track, I've actually got the guitar parts. So if I go to my mixer, I'm just going to turn this effect off. I don't want to use it yet. Let's bring in the guitar. Now, for the guys who like the MPC style workflow, right? Let's go to my drum track, yeah? On here, track three, and go to my notes mode. Now I've got my 16, but I could populate that into 64 if I want to. So now I can do some cool stuff and start. So once you've once you've made your clip, right, I can launch it on here. So you're launching stuff in real time. Take it out, bring it back in, bring in the voice cells. Now this guitar part, take that out. Take that out. So you're doing all of this stuff by using stems, different types of patterns, and it really gives you the creative freedom to do whatever you want. Now, from an electronic perspective, if I'm doing like house music and stuff like that, and I want to go on stage and take my own music, or I want to remix stuff on the fly and interact the product, it gives you all those abilities because you've got arpeggiation, you've got four built-in synths, you're dealing with time stretching and pitch shifting in real time. So it makes it so much more versatile because again, it's very tactile because you're, you're, you're launching scenes and rows. So like I said, if I go to, um, let's go to a new project really quick. It's gonna load up a different project. A, so this is a project where we can simply go, okay, um, I've got my kicks, snares, bass lines, chords, everything all mapped out, and but I can launch it in scenes. I'm so. trying to resist the uh, urge to tell you how brilliant this is. Oh, 
do you know what? I won't do that. I, you know, when I'm when I'm creating demos and making music with force, you start going through your libraries and stuff, and you find some like loops, and you just populate them onto the clips, and then you pull up your drums, and and the thing is, you would use it how you would use it. So from an MPC perspective, you would use it in that kind of workflow. Okay, someone who's electronic would use it completely different because they they would they would use it like this. They would go to the look. They'll go step sequencer. You know the classic. So they'll be programming stuff like this. Um, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to shoot on this clip to two bars for a second. So there'll be. So here we go. I'm just doing some real basic stuff. Um, so that's now running on a on a clip. Okay, so that's that pattern there. Um, I can delete. I can delete some of this and go. Okay, I'm just going to delete those patterns. And it's always playing on that drum kit. Now, what's also really cool? I'm just going to stop this. If I go to my content, go to my kits. These will preview for me. Right. So I'm going to. I'm going to take, let's take that kit there. Now, that kit is now on that track. So it's changed all the sounds over. It's now a completely different kit. And we'll just play that. So because all the kits have got the same location on the drums, you can just keep changing over the kits and get different vibes so this straight away. Is sort of a, this is kind of a, a, an Ableton sort of a deal in, in some respects. Well, we've got. Ableton integration. So, um, what I'm showing tomorrow is how you can put force into a Ableton control mode, and I can control my Ableton session and use force at the same time. So I can bounce between two workflows. I can go from so I can have force populated with stems and tracks and synths. Then I can jump into controller mode, and I'll be controlling my Ableton environment. So standalone, and also yeah. integrates with Ableton. Yeah, and we can use uh, while, um, Ableton Link to control all of that. Excellent. Um, what 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 creative what creative manipulations are possible with the uh, with the say you have a clip you want to modify? Well, well, the thing is, you can do anything with a clip. So we can add all the effects. We can time stretch, pitch shift. You can do all of this stuff in real time. But also with this these OLEDs, okay, on the knobs. So if we go to, um, let me show you something really cool. So let's launch that pad there, okay, all right? Go to my mixer. Now what's great, everything's, everything looks great. So let's take this track here, go to inserts, okay. Let's put on a, Filter gate. I have demoed this sound quite a few times in the past two hours because it's my favourite at the moment. <laughs> yeah, I know. Do you know what it is? Because you um, you can record something, you put it onto it, and it just gives you this really nice like movement. Um, so we got that running, and then we can just pull in. This is something you really could get lost in for hours. You know what? It's not even so much getting lost because the workflow is so easy. It's just the creative ideas that it gives you. That's what I mean. Because you've got all of this stuff at your fingertips. You've got that step sequencer approach. You've got the MPC workflow approach from, from the drumming. I mean getting lost in a good way. Oh, no, absolutely. Um, you know, having, having something like Force where you're moving into the, the pattern way of music production, live performing, instant ideas and creativity. You know, you've got mic inputs, you can do vocal chops, vocal ideas, all that kind of stuff. And also, if you look on here, I've got these cool modes where we go to, um, what I'm gonna do, this track here, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get rid of this track. And if I hold that down, I can decide, uh, actually no, here we go, I've got a plug-in already there. So. On that track, if I go shift and clip, I've got my synth here. 
Okay, I've got no clips, so I haven't created a pattern yet, but my synth is open, so I can go into my notes mode. Um, so let's find a sound of thousands of presets. So many, you can customize them, make your own. Um, go to find something. So now, shift, notes mode. So we're in scales, we go to chords, progressions. Really easy. Um, the richness of these sounds is lovely. Yeah. yeah. Amazing. I'm always interested in, in how this is a big investment to develop something like this. So the coding and the manufacturing. How does this, how did, who comes up with this idea and how does a company commit to say this is a product we, we want to do? We have many brilliant people um, within the company. We all make music, we're all producers. You know, we're all very much in touch with what goes on. And when you see, when you see what people are looking for to take their creative ideas to the next level, we started to work out what that format should be. What would what would they need? You know, why do people want to move away from computers? You know, but what if if they did? What would they need inside something? So they so it gives them a complete workflow, but also something that is not just for this type of user. Something that's generic. And the one thing about Force and with with, with what we've done is with the with the play, produce, perform, that covers everyone. Anyone who wants to create, right? Anyone who wants to write songs or come up with sketch ideas or go and do live performance performances or take your own productions, stem them out in your renders, bring the parts straight into here, chop them up, you know, make them your own, use all the internal sounds or make your own. It's a real easy process, but it's fun at the same time. I see the capacity of once you've got it set up, you could be very intuitive with it. Oh, God. In, in, one of the things that we really wanted to achieve as well is to make the workflow intuitive, very seamless, so you're not getting lost in multiple menus. You can dig deep. Don't get me wrong. You can dig deep, but um, everything's laid out. It's straightforward. Like I say, notes mode, shift configuration you're in there I go back to launch I'm now in launch mode hey I want to combine both of them I actually I want to launch my clips and play the notes double click right so now I've got my clips and my notes but if you if but if you watch the screen of what's going on I can go into these different modes but the screens doing something different as well so I, I've got notes and my clips but maybe I want to see my mixer or maybe I want to see my effects and go into my effects. But maybe I want to control my effects. This is following me around, right? So if I go into knobs and go into screen, this is going to follow me whatever parameter that I'm in, right? So if I go to select, um, let me go down here, see what I've got on here. Um, let me find the plugin channel. Hold on, plug in. There's my plug in, so there we go. So now I'm in my plug in mode. Uh, I go to knobs, screen, there we go. Um, so now I've got all my parameters of my synth engine all on board. Uh, there we go. So this is now populated. So when I go through each page, I can see all my different modes. So for live performance, I can utilize these very quickly or I can customize them right in project mode so I could go knobs project mode and I can map everything myself so I could go to menu and I can set up all my own commands I've got kill switches here um, resonance cut off but again I can do all this myself and utilize all of these features how I want to yeah I see that this this is a uh an instrument really in a, in a, you're not in stuck a, with like that's how you have to make music that's right you know that and that's what that's what I've discovered that how I make music or produce is how I would use it but someone else would use it completely different it's uh, I'm, not, I'm no longer gonna, going to redo uh, or re resist saying it's brilliant it's pretty brilliant so uh, thank you guys for giving me some 
something else to feed my uh, gear addiction syndrome. Don't you have any sympathy? <laughs> it, will, um, it will push the boundaries of what you're doing. Thank you. Um, without a doubt. So, yeah, I'm glad you, I'm glad you love the product. Thank you, Andy Mack, Akai, uh, with the Akai Force here at NAM 2019.